All right, 1v1 time, Dogbird and I squaring off. I am manning my lovely High Elves. He is playing some disgusting green skins. Let's go over both of our armies here and uh, just kind of get an idea for what we're dealing with. So I went with a little center line of uh, some Phoenix Guard, Keepers of the Flame, the Regiments of Renown unit here. These guys are pretty impressive. They do magic damage, they do AP, they do anti-large. So they are really good just kind of center line unit. They really kind of hold that line. They also have the Mark of Assyrian. Now this basically means that when they die, they burst into flames and they do damage. Let's actually pause this. Um, we also have, have them both flanked with Swordmasters of Hoeth. Now, Swordmasters of Hoeth here are a pretty good choice because they are AP, they are anti-infantry, so they're going to mulch up a lot of the Greenskins, you know, tried and true fighting force, which is their infantry. So the Swordmasters of Hoeth bring a lot of terror, um, not quite literal terror, but a, <laughs> a lot of terror to the opponent and the ability to just kind of eat through things. They do have deflect shots, so the good thing about deflect shots here as well is that they does it does give them some range defense, uh, fighting off against any of the uh, goblin firing line with the rusty errors and some other night goblin archers, so it does allow you to kind of really defend against that. Now, both units are flanked again with two more additional units of spearmen here, uh, just a really good, just all-around standard fighting unit. Can't go wrong with any spearmen, any high elf army uh, that make the backbone backbone up of both the total war and the tabletop equivalents. Now, as far as archery goes or, or range attacks go, we have two units of high elf archers and then one unit of sisters of Averlorn. Now, I love the sisters of Averlorn. The they are the only AP range damage that you can have in the army outside of the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, and they are extremely reliable. They have really good range at a whopping 180. They do magic damage, they do fire damage, so they have a lot going for them. Now, the biggest thing, though, on top of all this, is that they are decent melee combatants. What does that really mean? Okay, so let's take a look at the melee attack of 38 and melee defense of 50 of the Sisters of Avalorn, just going off those numbers strictly alone. Now, if we were to look at the uh, High Elf Archers, they have a melee attack of 18 and melee defense of 26, so almost half of both. And by comparison, the Spearmen have melee attack of 22 and melee defense of 50. So really, you're taking like the Sisters of Avalorn who have the same exact melee defense of Spearmen with actually even better uh, offensive capabilities than the Spearmen. So uh, they really do have a lot of things going for them. And I really do love the Sisters of Avalorn, especially the fact that they shoot uh, beaming LAS cannons downrange. Now, on top of that, we have a high mage. I went with a high mage. I really like the high mage when it comes to the high elves. You get a lot of uh, really good kit access in here. They do the ward. They increase a ward save. They have some healing. They have some other great abilities. So I went fire convocate, fire convocation, and apotheosis. We also have our lovely uh, prince on a star dragon. Now we do have some skirmisher units in uh, the Hylerian Reaver archers that are just kind of out over here, ready to do some initial damage. Now. Let's take a look at Dogbert's army here. He has got quite a few orc biguns. In addition, he's got a lovely little contingent of night goblins. So he has a nice little uh, army here. If you take a look, the orc biguns are a great choice against high elves because when you take high elves, you typically expect a lot of monstrous creatures or a lot of cavalry. Orc biguns are anti-large, so you do have that capability here, as you can see. That bonus versus large does allow them to really bring a lot of damage to the fore. And on top of that, they do a lot of damage in and of themselves, so they can hit up and destroy a lot of just the, the usual uh, spearmen infantry of the high elves. In addition, he did go with some... Black Orcs. Now, Black Orcs are a really good option here as well because they are armored. They do deliver AP damage, so they can deal with a lot of the more elite high elf infantry. But the biggest thing with them is that they are pretty stalwart and hard to uh, really supplant when you are feeling, attacking them or when you're dealing with them as high elves because you only have Sisters of Avalon that can deal with them from ranged and you have to get something that is AP in their face to deal with them in melee combat. So there, are, there aren't as many options in the high elf roster. Now, obviously we want some squig herds here, which is going to be a really good backline harassing unit. Anytime you deal with high elves, you do want to shut down that backline as soon as possible. Uh, again, two more units of, uh, or sorry, one more additional unit of night goblins. And then in the background here, he has two units of orc boy big guns, really great anti-large and AP as well. These can really deal with any kind of uh, dragon attacks or dragon princes, any of the mounted 
heavily armored choices that the high elves do bring so as a whole dogbert has a pretty strong armor army here as level as well as the uh, the great rusty errors uh, as we were talking about the uh, the dreaded goblin firing line which is inclusive of two night goblin archers and then the rusty errors which are in regiment of renown unit of night goblin archers so there is a lot going here and let's kind of see how this plays out if you if you have already seen it let's uh, let's have some fun together again right oh and of course we have Wurzog. Wurzog is one of, probably one of the more uh, competitive choices for the Greenskins as he does add a lot of really great abilities here. He does have Effigy of the Get, which allows you to lock down any unit in which... I have to get over here to actually hover over it. Uh, there we go. Right there. Effigy of the Get, which locks down a unit and allows you to really wreak a lot of damage on them. So you can lock down, say, a dragon and then use your Rusty Arrows to just burst it down as fast as possible. So Wurzog has a lot of really good utility to, to bring to the battlefield. So the initial engagement here is um, I'm using my Illyrian Reaver archers to try and bait out as based out these rusty errors. Remember, all night goblins do have stock. So the, the prime ex objective here is to get them exposed, find them on the map, see where they are. That way I can really control my movement. Um, I've got my prince over here trying to really get a, a, a movement or at least an angle on those rusty errors. Oh, here it is right here. The effigy of the gate has now kicked off. So these Illyrian Reaver archers, as you can see, they cannot move. It does a little bit of damage to them over time. So you can see them just kind of falling away. And then, oh, boom. You see the rusty errors are shooting into them. And this little symbol, this little, uh, this green fire smoke everything this is the wah this is map why this is kicked off for the grin skins it increases speed charge bonus and melee attack it's a really 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 strong um advantage especially in the the kind of the tipping points of a frontline engagement you can use wah to really push home the advantage or tip it in your favor now i will be honest here that was not a great move by dogbert as this allowed me to do this oh enjoy this goblins you're going to Pound Town. Pound Town of Fire Breath Pound Town. Look at that. Mm -mm. Now, I love the Fire Breath attack. The biggest way and the best way to use Fire Breath is on the side and flank of a unit. You don't want to use it straight on. It doesn't track very well, so you want to be able to get as much splash damage through the unit as possible. Then we have uh, the Bor 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 the Orc Boy Big Guns trying to chase down those Lyran Reaver Archers, but they are quite fast. They are probably the best fast cav in the game at a whopping 90 speed. They're quite quick, and they have quite a good range at 140, in addition to Fire Wills moving. So they can really harass a unit very well, and, and I love using one, if not two of them, in every High Elf army I bring. And really, the, the big goal here now is to just get any kind of additional shots we can on the Rusty Errors, trying to keep them suppressed as much as possible. They suffered about a little bit less than half health from that Fire Breath, so it puts me in a really good, strong, advantageous position because then if I get another Fire Breath on them, it's pretty much going to make them flee off the board. But as we can see... Uh, <clears throat> What's his name? I almost called him Gobbo King. Uh, Dogbert is pushing up the line here. That is a pretty important thing with Greenskins. You want to push home that uh, that engagement as fast as possible. You don't want to hang in the background here. Because with my archers, you can see, I'm going to be able to hit them as soon as they crest this point. So any kind of uh, additional time or momentum you can get charging in, you want to get up that ASAP. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention here is a, uh, a Goblin Shaman that he did bring that he's going to probably use any kind of foot of Gork. There it is. <laughs> So, as you can see, I just was able to to, uh, to move forward. You can watch the uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth. If this were to target, if you get Effigy of Get Down and then the Foot of Gork, you are going to see a massive amount of damage be delivered on the battlefield. In this case, it only really did a little bit less than or more than an eighth damage to the Swordmasters of Hoeth. Had I not moved this line, it would have probably deleted a good chunk of this. You can see where that, the big footprint is and just barely missed. And again, that's one of the, the strongest things of the big and little wah for the Greenskins is you, you have that ability, to, which is basically like a fade-up unit, unit, right? Where you can just outright delete a more elite unit. Now, uh, the Squig Herds here are moving in on the side, trying to screen the Lyran Reaver archers into my Spearmen. I've got my archers kind of shooting into these Squig Herds, trying to help me or uh, help kind of quell them. Again, you don't want those things getting those back line. They are anti-infantry, they are AP, so they will just kind of eat up any kind of archer they, they see. Now we've got uh, the Rusty Errors shooting onto the Swordmasters of Hoeth, which is a very strong and good target for them. Uh, at the Rusty Errors, the biggest thing that makes them terrifying is their Sunder Armor capability. Let's see if we can hover over that. There it is, minus 30 to armor, and when you have an armored unit, 
it's really dangerous and especially a large target like a dragon it can really 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 eat through their uh, health pool very fast but we can see that the uh, the attack is getting in full effect a fiery convocation is getting kicked off in the back line here is it going to do much damage we're about to see the longest spell cast in the game as it rips through the front of the black orcs now it doesn't do a ton of damage to armored units so it was a little bit of a miscast on my point we have the Night Goblins already releasing their fanatics, ripping through some uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth here, and the archers are starting to get some shots in on these big guns. Now, the uh, the fight is about to really kind of get way here as the Laz guns kind of shoot down range at these big guns as they charge into more of our uh, Swordmasters here. Oh, yeah. Night Goblins in there as well. Oh, so much carnage going off. And those Swordmasters are going to eat up a lot of the big guns' attacks. Where's our charge in the front line into Spearman, which is not the best charge here. Um, it's pretty dangerous. We've got our dragon kind of strafing the lines here, getting any kind of a uh, position he can. The big thing, again, is trying to get that flank position. And boom, look at that, right down the, the way of those big guns, knocking them to a little bit less than half health. I'm sorry, a little bit more than half health. And again, there, that's going to help tip the balance for them because the Spearman trade into big guns uh, decently well. They will lose the fight, but this kind of helps put them into a better position. You got the dragon charging in on this goblin shaman, knocking it out almost immediately. You've got our Phoenix Guard trying to hold the line against these black orcs. They're one of the only units, aside from our sword masters, that's gonna be able to do a significant amount of damage. You've got a fiery convocation ripping through the front line here, too. The big ones are not as armored as their black orc counterparts. So that is okay. That's an okay kind of a, a attack to get off. It does a considerable amount of damage, as you can see, both these units are now at or if not under 50% health. They're starting to flee off the table here and it frees up those sword masters to get into a better position to flank or help out with our uh, Phoenix Guard. Now, the big thing here is our Orc Boy big guns that are on this side and this side. They can pose a pretty serious threat to both our Prince as well as this big gap that I, that I really should not have left open. I kind of got a little cocky and charged my Phoenix Guard out, leaving this huge gap here and leaving my Sisters of Avalon as well as my Mage very, very, very well exposed, and that's not good. But we do have our uh, Dragon trying to help kind of diverge that uh, that charge a little bit. Again, those big guns, they can do a bit of damage to a Prince, so it's not the best kind of engagement to have him in. York Boy big guns trying to get any kind of a threading of the needle. Wurzog in very low condition up there. Moving our Spearmen here to try and catch those uh, Orc Boy big guns out. And we're moving our, our lovely prince onto Wurzog here, trying to crush that leadership. That's the biggest thing when it comes to any kind of uh, uh, greenskins you're dealing with, or even Skaven, is to knock out that leadership as fast as possible. The Orc Boy Biggins come around over there. Got another unit trying to thread the, thread the needle through the center. We're, we're surrounded on all sides by cavalry here. Marching into the, the High Mage, which is not overall a bad move, I gotta say. We've got the Orc Boy is going to smash into our Sisters of Avalorn. <laughs> Setting them flying. God, I love cap charges in this game. Now, using the Orc Boy Biggin on the, the High Mage is, again, not a bad move. Because they do AP and anti-large damage. So they'll be able to knock her out of the game a little bit quicker than, say, some of the other units. And catching her out in the open like that, that's it's kind of like a two for one, right? Let's kind of keep this going here. So we have our Sisters of Avalorn engaged. But we do have a lovely dragon ready to roast some boars. Ready for the bacon cook-off. Oh man, just made this a huge pile of, of, of orc deathdom right there. But these ones are fleeing off the table. We have our spearmen kind of holding the line over here. Swordmasters of Hoeth in pretty good health. Dragon coming to aid them. Left flank, uh, not in as good a shape as the right flank. Dealing with black orcs that are heavily armored. But we do have our uh, phoenix guard, which are mulching through these black orcs in a slow, kind of steady, timely manner. Manner. School of Leeching kicking off here as we knock out the Night Goblin Shaman. It's just a matter of really just crushing that leadership utterly so we can kind of clinch the win here. Uh, the majority of Dogbird's forces... Oh, as you can see, that guy just burst into flames. Dogbird's forces are in disarray. They have pretty much fled or are now kind of rallying from the fleeing. But I think uh, it's kind of a foregone conclusion at this point as the win belongs to me, the mighty Italian Spartacus. Uh, for those of you that didn't really catch this, this was, again, part of the Everchosen Summer in Invitational. Uh, this was the end of day one. Uh, Dogbird and I, uh, we had been kind of doing a, a fun banter throughout the entire day, and he he said, I got a surprise for you. And right at the end, it was, a, uh, it was a grudge match 
between myself and the, the mighty Mr. Dog, CA's mighty Mr. Dogbert. Now, uh, as you can see here, those big guns, they still do a considerable amount of damage. 80 kills is primarily against Spearman units, but it does do a lot. And you have 123 kills against from those Black Orcs dished out against both Spearmen and Swordmasters of Hoeth. This was the uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth on our opposite flank from the from the strong one, that is. And you can see they're almost dead. These guys are almost dead. These guys are almost dead. So those the big ones and the Black Orcs were very strong. What Dogbert should have done, or, or probably what it could have done, was, was really skip out on these two Night Goblins fanatics uh, while they're really kind of cool thematically if he had taken two night goblin archers he probably wouldn't able to, would have, he would have been able to pressure my prince a lot more and kept him out of the fight a lot more or at least unable to get as many kills as he did he got 83 kills just roasting night goblins roasting some big guns and roasting uh, some orc boy big guns as well um, as you can see too the orc boy big guns would have been better served sweeping around wide and maybe even threading the needle through the large gap that I put. Dogbert did thread that towards the end, but doing it maybe towards the uh, mid fight would have been really well served because he would have shut down a lot of the range damage I was able to do. I mean, if we take a look at our ranged, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, almost 150 kills between the three of them, 39, 43, and 62. So they were able to really kind of stay online the entire fight and do a considerable amount of damage. But overall an amazing match and i hope you guys got a chance to catch the summer the uh the ever chosen summer invitational it is up on their on total wars official twitch if you want to go rewatch it i know janet myself in turn are recasting some of the uh battles such as this one here but um if you didn't get a chance to see this episode we will have another one coming up soon i don't know one exactly but we will keep doing a um ever chosen invitationals even if it's not with ca turn and i will will do them no matter what so i hope you guys enjoyed this thanks so much for watching here today we got plenty of goodies coming out the rest of this week have a good one and take care